Hey everybody, we're gonna get started in a second. I'm just bringing up Facebook. <clears throat> Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Master Trader Live. Okay. All right. As Dan said, welcome all. And uh, today we're going to talk about scanning uh, our charts for Master Trader buy and sell setups. So if you want to learn how to find high odds, price patterns for investing, swing trading, and day trading, that's exactly what we're going to show you how Dan and I do it every single day. Um, right here. So stay tuned. You're watching Master Trader Live. Simple market analysis and education can help you make money in the market. Join us live each week on Facebook and see past episodes at Master Trader Live. And now your show host, Great Show. Everybody, welcome back. I'm Greg, and I'm joined by Dan with the team behind Master Trader. Be sure to uh, visit our site, sign up for a free chart of the week, and learn valuable lessons every day. So how's it going, Dan? How you been doing today? Hey, fantastic, Greg. Uh, just a quick uh, housekeeping question. I'm trying to start the video and it says you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. Because of what, Dan? The host, you, has stopped it. So maybe if you start your video first, I don't know. Because I, I don't see your picture either. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to put it on Facebook. Yeah, it's still not letting me in. They might, I, they might have to just uh, look at your beautiful face today. That's not bad. <laughs> so, so yeah, this. Whatever, We're, we are on in our Zoom platform, but as far as Facebook goes, could be because I am showing the, um, my screen oh. here with the, let me just push this ahead to see. All right, well, let me take over and we'll just experiment. Yeah, sorry about this, folks. We'll get started instantaneously. Oh, this is... oh, you had your slides uploaded into there, Dan? No, I'm trying to do that right now in, in the, the drop down menu. This will stop in it. Well, anyway, it's showing on Facebook. I just switched it, so let's get going. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, what we were going to talk about today, and, and I want to simplify it by breaking it down into its individual parts before we move to the charts and actually look at uh, what we uh, are looking for with these individual candles and then put them in the context of individual price patterns. Okay? That's what we do every day. So, you know, Dan and I take a very simple approach to what we're doing here. We eliminate the indicators. We eliminate even as we're going to look at candlesticks here, we even want to eliminate the thought of various names because when you, you know, putting, and we do define some things, you know, which is mostly for educational purposes, but our main focus is the picture, right? The pattern, what is it communicating to us? So on this slide, I have a few candles, as you could see, and let me just get a pointer out here. It makes it easy for everyone to follow. Hey, but Greg, you can't um, you can't sell a textbook with fancy names if you don't come up with um, you know impressive names for these things. All right. We'll make them up on the fly. <laughs> we're, here, we're here to impress. All right. So let's see. All right. So I got these few candles here, and as I said, we want to simplify what it is that we do and take away all of the hype of things like calling things dark cloud covers and morning stars and whatever the names are. I've kind of long forgotten many of them. So, and, and as I look at these candles and when you're looking at what we're mostly interested in is momentum increasing or is it decreasing? So when I see a big 
green candle like this one here. And we're gonna say momentum's increasing. And the next step, which we'll look at is from what point is it increasing? Is it telling me that there's the start of a move or an end of a move? And that is the very simple approach of just looking at what we call wide range candles. And from there, what happens is momentum slowed down. And that can happen in so many different ways. But as I look at it, I see, well, here's one with a tail on the top. What does that mean to me that there's a tail on the top? Clearly it went up and it came back down. So there must have been some selling. The one in the middle here kind of ended right in the middle where it went up, it went down. And, you know, when we look at candles, we talk about where the open is and when the close is. So just to really simplify it, if it's colored green, that means it closed above the opening price. And if it colored red, that means it closed below the opening price. Really, very simple. Right? Then we look at these tails. And if it's a tail on the top, we say, well, that, that is bearish. And if there's a tail on the bottom, we say, well, that was bullish. And if this tail's on the top and the bottom, we say that's neutral. But in any event, any of these with little candle bodies, we say that the momentum is slowing down. And if it's a little tiny body with little tails, say it came to a screeching halt. You know, it just, just stop, stop there. And we'll look at trends and put it in the context of that and say, well, what does that all mean to us? But this is what we do is take these individual candles, big ones, little ones, ones with tails, ones with no tails. Are they red or they green? And we put them together in a, in a combination of candles that then creates a picture, a pattern that tells yeah. us information. Yeah, Greg, let me just add something about the tails and it might seem basic um, to, to those of you who have been trading candlestick patterns, but we like to also think, or we like to teach about the thought process of how charts are and bars are made. So when you, when you summarily said a topping tail is bearish and a bottoming tail is bullish, let, let's talk about that for a second, because somebody might be thinking, why? Okay, you told me it is, and I trust you, but why? So the thought process is, let's, let's talk about it. Let's assume these are daily bars. So a topping tail at the dead intraday high, ask yourself what that bar looked like relative to the first green bar on this slide, then it would be another bullish wide range bar that you know negated a, a gap down into that bar. Then at the dead high of the day, the bulls were in huge control. And then what happened at 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern time market close? The selling pressure drove the day's range back down to 80% lower of the day's range. That's why we say that that's a bearish bar and opposite for a bottoming tail. Awesome. One second. But as, as you'll see, and as Greg you know, said a couple of times, this is what we do bar by bar analysis. Well, uh, I hadn't said that yet, Dan, but that's exactly right. As we put these together, these individual bars, it can guide us as to what's happening um, on, an on an individual basis. But we have to start with this basic picture. And you know, one of the things that, well, a lot of things that we teach individuals when we talk about these candles, when Dan had said, what does this actually mean? And then what he explained to you to really drive home, what it means is put yourself into that explanation that he gave as to what it went up and then what happened at, at the end of the day. And imagine you bought here. And now it looks like this with the tail. Or can you imagine you bought here and now it looks like this. So 
of the many things that we need to remember is that a candle is not complete until the end of the time period that we're using it in. So if you're going to trade a swing trade, which my definition says, you know, I'm, I'm using daily and weekly time frames, and I believe that the stock is going to move either up or down, my expectation is to hold it two to five days, maybe longer. So if you, if you make a decision right now, say at 12 o'clock on what a candle looks like, it may not look like that at four o'clock. And I've been in that position many years ago. And well, and let's even talk did. about let's even talk about today, Greg, uh, and the folks in our uh, master trader green room, our live chat room, they hear us say all the time, if XYZ stock closes like this, and, you know, close to us is, you know, three o'clock into the close is fine. If we get an intraday, you know, entry confirming it and, and the broader markets are, are holding fine. But even today, we had a very bearish gap down on the trade wars uh, news and, and all the broader market indices. And we watched a bullish retracement. They, the Q, you know, path, they stalled where they should have. And we said, now we need more information. Since then, I'm looking at the broader market on my computers, these spiders uh, and diamonds made new lows. So that's just another example why we didn't trust the, the candle yet. Right. So yeah, it's all about the time frame that you're going to utilize. So right, daily chart, you know, it's 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. We don't know what that daily chart's going to look like at the end of the day. So let's go on to the next one. Uh, so here we're looking at showing the difference, wide range bars, narrow, narrow range bars. And on the bottom, we have what we call topping tail bars. And as we said on the prior one, what did it look like before and what does it look like now? what was the experience of those creating it as a big green bar and what is their experience now and what are they thinking why did that change yeah my mouse okay um and so these topping tails and on the right here we call them bottoming tail bars or buyers took control one of the things to consider is what's the range of that bottoming and topping tail? So you see that the bottoming tail on the right here, one is big and one is small. Uh, as we look at ranges and we look at candles and we look at chart patterns, we do that from the perspective of other individuals and sometimes uh, us, of course, created that candle. What are we thinking? What was our experience? And so understanding price patterns from the point of view of what others are thinking is a very powerful concept versus saying, hey, that, that is a harami or a dark cloud cover. Or, and all of those, these patterns change as you change time frames. So you have to understand multiple time frames. But we'll take a look at that as we get to the scams. What you want to look here is whether it's a big bar, is it a little bar? What did it look like before it completed itself and what it does look like when it completed itself? So I'm being asked, does uh, the range, does it include the wick? Absolutely. Um, so when we talk about range, we have to consider the wick because that's part of the range. Why would I exclude it? You know, I, that would be telling me, why do I even look at a candle at all? I could just look at the closing prices if we chose to do that. But we want a complete picture. So yes, we're looking at the range and looking at the tails as well. It's an important part of what we're, we're viewing. Okay. So a couple of more slides and then we're going to get to the scans and actually find these. And that's what we want to do. So what we're doing here is, is covering what it is that we want to look for, and then we're going to look for it. And that's what a scanner does for us, helps us speed up the time for us to find what we're looking for. So these wide range bars, 
as you can see, I want to know whether it's ending a move, and that comes after multiple bars moving in one direction, and then the wide range bar, or is it igniting a move? In other words, did the wide range bar start to move? So these candle patterns, right, they provide us information that guides us to what should happen. We put it in the context of a trend, support, resistance, and we come with a pretty accurate picture about what should happen after we see that. So, and again, we look at these from the point of view of what others are thinking, fear, greed. Dan, you've probably been in one of these at one time or another, either up or down. How Absolutely. You I mean, when, <laughs> if you when were in one of these and you were long, how's that feel? Uh, not so good. That's that's probably just in <laughs> maybe my earlier days because I surely wouldn't get caught like that now. I've instead, I you know, we're contrarians when the chart's set up. When I see that picture, I'm just it, it's on my watch list whether it's that bar or five more sell-off bars. And I, it's the folks in the green room know this. I tell them I will be trading you someday. It's just a matter of when you set up. Then we teach how to use multiple time frames to get on board the intraday uh, changing of the guard, so to speak, when the selling's exhausted. Absolutely. You know, when I started years ago thinking about charts and candles from the point of view of how did that make someone else feel? Of course, you was connect that to how do you feel? Because we all feel the same pain and greed, right? And I really connected with that because <clears throat> as I reviewed old trades and when I sold and, and you know, back then it was like, well, why did I sell the low of the move? Because of how I felt. Now, if I could connect that feeling to a chart and what it looked like, it was a powerful thing. So just Wait. knowing that a wide range bar after multiple bars moving down was a picture of fear and the possible end of a move, it, it became so much more powerful for me because when I would look at review my trades, I would say, well, why did I sell the bottom of that candle right there? And so again, you know, looking at that and, and then putting it together with other concepts, it just became so powerful as to, you know, recognizing these turning points or, or stalls in momentum. And we also refer to that as, as hitting your puke point. You're like, oh my God, I can't take the pain anymore of watching your unrealized P&L grow redder and redder. And, and just to give the flip side again, since you know we like to concentrate on the thought process, the opposite where you're saying greed is increasing, have you ever, and so let me just give you the hypothetical, like you know, a stock's ripping to the upside in multiple days. And then you go to happy hour and your friends say, oh, I'm up $3 on Facebook um, and, and you aren't in it. And then the next day, no, I'm not in it. The next day you read the Wall Street Journal. Oh, Facebook up another $4. The next day it gaps up $6. And you're like, I can't take the greed any longer. I have to get on this train and you're buying the high. Right, right. And there have been times in our chat room where I've said to those in the room, sell this right here. And it's like, well, it's still going up. I said, yeah, I know, <laughs> but it's going to stop going up. <laughs> and it was based on this picture right here that says greed is increasing. So we were long and it had been going up. And now, you know, from the time frame that I see, I, all I see this is this giant bar. And I'm like, that's it. And again, it doesn't mean that it can't go up a bit more, but historically, it doesn't do that. It's, it's ready to stall in momentum. So we get out. Sometimes we get the high. Sometimes it goes a bit higher. That's, you know, you have to have a trading plan. And these individual candles, in addition to money management and other concepts that we'll look at when we scan, is, is that they help guide us as to what we're going to do rather than having random thoughts about that.
Those of you that are on Facebook, please, you know, share Master Trader, um, like our page, type MT in there so that you get uh, made aware of when we post and when we're live. You know, post them in there. But I think we have one more slide and then we're going to go to the charts. Awesome. Let's see if I can move this along. Ah, I got a little automation here. So we try and keep things simple, really simple. So here are four foundational patterns that we, that we use. And the simple retracement pattern. And it's just here is, it says simple pullback. And what we look for is prices pulling back, ideally in an uptrend, they're coming to a reference point that we call price support. And it begins to turn around where the ranges contract and then a green candle. And remember, you remember what the green candle meant, right? It closed above the open. So we had a change where it was red down, 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 and it begins to reverse. And we look for the location of where that reversal is occurring. Is it at support? Is it an uptrend? Is this, could this be a climactic pattern? Right? And if it's a down, on the downside, the red bar means it's coming into resistance. Retest and failure patterns. This is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, because it takes a little bit longer for it to develop. And as, as prices come down, especially in today's market, a lot of times there's these little shakeouts, little points of uncertainty about you know, the turn actually happening with this high frequency trading and algorithms and all of that. Now, from a daily chart perspective, it's also powerful because it just takes more time for the, it to set up. Uh, so it's multiple days, it could take a week. So when you get the retest, that point of going sideways over time creates a larger area of support. And it should have, and it does historically have a bigger move because it's created a larger support area. So I really like these retest patterns. Um, you know, in a way, it's like, you know, from a playing cards, you say that there was a tell. Right? So I know what's going on here, what's coming. Well, when I see a pullback and a bottoming tail, to me, that's a tell. It's like institutions stepped up and there were buyers. And now I have a reference point where they're going to step up again. And I look for the confirmation. And once I have it, I've got a great setup. That's why I really like them. Hey, Greg. Patterns. Yeah. yeah, maybe maybe you can add uh, of why you like retest patterns that make a new low. The psychology of that again. Sure, that's you know I kind of call that a a bonus if it makes a new low, and you know I say, well, why would you want that to make a new low <laughs> to come down there? Well, because it's all about chart psychology, is what I would call it. Whereas some traders that bought here that use extremely tight money management, they're gonna have their stops right under there. So if this was to come down, now what I'm gonna draw here, if you see it, go ask Dan for all of his money and put it on the line. <laughs> right? Yeah, but then that would, that, would, that would create a wide range igniting bar then. Well, no, you're gonna get in before it ignites. <laughs> And then after they expel all of your money, then we would have the wide range bar. But the point is it takes out the low. And what did this look like folks before it became a bottoming tail bar? What happened there? When that poked under here, why did the range expand at that point in time? And hopefully volume. Yeah. It doesn't have to be, but yes, that would Hopefully. be a plus. Doesn't have to. I've seen plenty happen without. Right? Andre's got it right in the room. Right? It was a wide range red bar. And what do wide bars tell us? What do they communicate? Emotions. Fear. Pow there was a powerful move. There was a range expansion. And then it turned around. 
So on the poke lower, the selling came in, the stops getting hit, and those buyers that were buying here, some are gonna say, hey, this is a gift. And they're taking those shares from the sellers. And now when it completes itself, we've got a, a bottoming tail bar that took out the low. And when it trades above this high, you, you're in, you buy it. Right. So Dan, what's the, what is the, one of the questions that we always get with this pattern when I say, or you say, buy it above the high? The, I know, I put you on sure. <laughs> Most will say, well, why don't you wait for it to take out that high? Because that, we're getting in on the basement floor. Right. 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 There's a greater cost for more confirmation or more than actually needed at the time. And a pattern like this, right, a pullback into support and a retest pattern has greater implications than an old high. So we have to take an old high. It's not as if it's in a downtrend and at resistance is a little blip up and then a pullback. And we put all of this together that creates high probability patterns, which puts the odds overwhelmingly in your side. Right. The next setup that we look for, it's called a flag. You've probably heard bull flags, um, bear flags. Well, in an uptrend, what a flag really means, right? we wanna get away from the names. We wanna understand what does this mean? Well, what it means is that there's extremely strong demand because after a strong move like this, there's no support. So one of the strategies that is used by probably 80, 90% of institutional traders, retail traders, any kind of traders is a pullback retracement. I don't know whether they use, you know, esoteric types of analysis like a Fibonacci or waves or whatever, right? It's about a retracement. So retracements pull back, right? Not to those imaginary lines that they draw on their charts, right? Connecting dots with trend lines or connecting dots with Fibonacci lines. And you want to get away from that hocus pocus stuff. That's holy grail trading. Right? <laughs> they pull back to areas of price support. But what if they don't? Well, that could be a flag pattern where it creates support in the middle of air, so to speak, that void that we teach, right? The price void concept. There's no support here. Over here, there, over here, there was support. So now that is a bullish pattern. After a strong move, we look for a continuation. And then lastly, the last pattern is a base, which also can create support after a strong move up. Or it could happen after an extended move down and prices begin to base, and then they start to move up again. So that's a, a cycle of where prices go up, down, base, go back up again, or they have gone up and then go sideways creating support. And you know we look at these individual little moves down. This is what Dan and I look for almost every single day. Well, every and, and, day if we can find it, right, Dan? Yeah, and, and actually that base is why we had so many bull put credit spreads last week because the broader markets retraced. Right. Then went sideways created for like eight days, chopping around, giving us a no brainer a base to sell a put or put spread beneath. And we make our uh, premium just we're calling a short term bottom. That, that's, that's, that was the trade last week. Yeah. And we love these little pokes to the downside that immediately recover. It's telling us somebody's under there buying. <laughs> They're sitting there on the bid. And what happens is like, if you've looked at a level two, there's bids and there's offers. And those that are sitting on the bid want to get filled cheap. Nothing wrong with that. 
But when they realize that they're not getting their fill or they're getting a partial fill, now they have to make a decision to take by the offer versus getting the bid. So they have to pay up a little bit. So when we see these pokes to the downside and then springs back up again, it continues to show us that buyers are aggressive on the dips. And you know, you know, Greg, I'm, I'm just sitting here as if I'm, you know, new to this. And, you know, there's many traders out there, stock and option traders or, you know, whatever your your approach to the market is to give you an edge. Um, but you and I know this this one, you know, option trading outfit in particular that they don't believe in charts. They say predicting direction is a 50 percent coin flip. And if that were the case, why do we have 85 percent um, batting average and why do we pick competitors? compelling patterns if it's just a coin flip. Yeah, I've heard you say that before. And it struck me just now. I don't know why. <laughs> it didn't hit me before. But if someone doesn't believe in charts at all, how could they even say it's a 50-50 coin flip? Because you know, through money management, even if you have 50-50, you make money. But if they didn't believe in charts at all, they would just say it can't be done. Right. So it's, it is a ridiculous statement and you are, I don't know, Dan, let's say more politically correct than I were not <laughs> willing to step on toes, but I'm not that way. I call it as it is. And what Dan is talking about is now I don't follow them, but Dan does. And they do great shows is tasty trade. Dan, they're called. Correct. Tasty trade. I don't believe in charts. And I've seen Dan has, has shown me and Dan has taught me a lot about options. And, you know, I put it in the context of how I want to to do them. Of course, everybody does that. But when he told me that they emphatically do not believe in charts and they're irrelevant to options trading and I see their trades, I'm like, these guys are missing the boat big time. <laughs> and yeah. uh, I don't know. I don't know how they can approach it that way, because I could show them so many of their their trades that if they were to add a chart to it, their profitability would increase big time. So totally that's, another, that's another conversation. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Let's uh, dive in. Greg's the most awesome, um, you know, technician and scanner uh, I have ever seen. He uh, he can he. I have seen him come up with compelling trades in, in an elevator ride to a meeting in in 15 seconds on his cell phone so let's let's uh, all the credit because it's the software that does the work right and that's what well, that's I what we're getting into right now it's into it no absolutely right but you two things to that you have to have the competence to put the right formula in the software to produce the list and number two then you have to have the knowledge to go through that list to know which ones are compelling trades. And that's what we're going to do together right now. Hmm. And I'm looking on my screen because the platform is there. Why isn't it picking the platform? Yeah. Hold on a second. It wants to show the whole screen versus Ah, it's getting kind of trying to throw me a curveball there. Okay, so you guys can see this screen, and let me tell you what it is that we're looking at here. Right? So we talked about these candlesticks. And these are a starting point for what I'm looking for. Most, I, I'm not just saying price patterns makes wonders in most of my vertical spreads. That's all you need is the price patterns, right? Um, you know, when I think about these things called Greeks, the only thing I take away from that, and I'm, I'm simplifying, of course, but I think of salad. I don't, Greek salads are great. Those <laughs> things don't add anything to my 
options analysis. I don't, because I want to keep it simple. I look at the price pattern. I look, is it in the money, out of the money? What's the spread? It makes sense to me, right? So let, let's look at these charts. Lawrence, wow, I'm Italian, Lawrence. <laughs> he says Greeks are fine, but they prefer, Lawrence prefers Italians. That's cool. All right, so what I have here is scans that look for those candles, right? Green wide range bars. A 180 just means it went down and went up, right? Bottoming tails, red bars, topping tails, a 180 down, that's a 180 up. And now I'm just looking for big ranges. So where was their activity? Now, I don't make my scans um, like pinpoint accurate. I used to do that years ago and make, you know, look for exact things, but I missed so many setups that I said, you know what? I don't mind to go through the charts and see what I find. So let's take a look. And, and this is current right now. They're live. Um, see what's creating a wide range bar. Now, because it's in the scan doesn't necessarily mean that it's what I'm interested in exactly. So I have to do a little bit of work here. So I was like, wow, look at that, man. I'm taking notes. Right. Now, wide range bar. And what we talked about was finding wide range bars where there were like little pokes to the downside. Here, there was a gap and it reversed back up again. Look, here's a topping tail and it didn't go down. And look at what, as I go further back here, look at what happened. Look at that gap down in reversal. And now there's a wide range bar today. It looks fantastic. And, and Greg, if you'll please just um, also add the, uh, the price void concept um, because the weekly and month, yeah, it looks like a no brainer foot spread. So this is a, diff a bit of a different conversation, but I'm sure someone there is wondering about the moving averages. And so we call these visual aids. They help us speed up the analysis. But what I know just by looking at those moving averages is that this stock has gone through a correction because the shorter one was under the longer one and now it's above and facing up. So we've got a bottoming pattern here and let us get a little more information. Right. And we can turn this to a weekly chart like Dan's asking. And we see this bottoming pattern here. So you know what I'm looking at, Dan, right? Why I, I scrunched that chart up. Yep. Why is it bottoming? Why now? Well, it's in an area of price support. Simple. No squiggly lines, no fib lines, no magic waves. It's just buyers were there before and they're stepping up again. And on the daily chart, I can see the details of that buying. Right. And so, I, and I don't mean this sarcastic, but for us traders, you know, we swing trade and core trade based off the charts and what we're talking about. Explain to me if you're a fundamentalist why CMCSA's um, price earnings ratio or management or you know sales give me one iota of information. To, to make a trade on this chart. It doesn't. I couldn't tell you, Dan, but I, we can see on the chart that it's gonna report earnings on the 26th of the month. And so somebody thinks that they're gonna be better than they had been, because I would assume they weren't too good because the chart was going down, but now it's being bought. So this is bottoming out here. So we could do a few things. This is what we do in the chat room, right? So we think about it's a bottoming pattern. A put spread should be a no brainer if we can get premium. And as I'm looking at them, Dan, we gotta go, we gotta go out 16 days to get you, some type you of premium, it. right? You got it. <laughs> yeah, so 
You know, I'm, look, <laughs> I'm looking at it and thinking, okay, there's nothing before that. Because if it was expiring this week, I'd be like, wow, they're giving it away. But anyway, so we'd have to go out 16 days to sell a spread below this little, this little base here. Or if we really wanted to own it, we could sell a naked put and collect that money. And if it went up into earnings, we'd get to keep that money. But let's move on to other things. There's so many things in the, in the scan here. We can't get them all, all of them, but that is how we begin to find what we're looking for. Simple scan. Well, now, Dr. Pepper here is ripping higher, so I kind of missed the boat on this one. Yeah, what a gap play yesterday we missed. Yep, and that would be a gap scan. Let's see what else. Oracle. Wow. So here's one we're not interested in at all. It could be a, puts, a call spread, though, Dan, in another day or so. All right, since it's coming up into resistance and that red line is a 200-day MA, if it was to reverse back down again, earnings are not until September. Could yeah, be, we'll keep an eye on it. Yeah, it could be a call spread candidate. Uh, someone's asking me to look at Walmart. I don't know that it's going to have a wide range bar, but I'll look at it. I want everybody to see what we're looking for. Walmart is a bottoming pattern here. So I suppose if you're patient, this is something that we could consider for a put spread since it's bottoming here. Um, but as far as a directional trade, it's really it's not something that would really interest me. I mean, it had an attempt, it would be a much more interesting here if it could have got going, but it couldn't and it's rebuilding again. So I'm a little, I would need more uh, proof that this could go up and I'd want to see it poke higher. Um, and, and also, you know, it's the opposite of, you know, kind of the void concept, but you know, if we keep things simple, like we're teaching a child, just look to the left and, you know, a child that understands football players or whatever analogy you want, how many football players are to the left there? A lot. So there's nowhere for this stock to go up when you have too much congestion. So we wouldn't touch this as a directional trade. Directional to us is multiple time frames are in agreement and we want a big target. This one has no target, but if we, as Greg said, sell an out of the money put and can collect some income just for calling a short term bottom, then that's another story. That's an income trade, not a directional. So here's part of the, the trap, if you will, and thinking cheap. Just because this is bottoming doesn't mean it has to go up. It could go sideways for a long time or it could even break lower. Um, so why not wait till it gets to 90? Yes, you're gonna pay more, but now it's gonna look fantastic with the void above. Why, and I thought you were going to say get to 90 and then the next pullback, but it obviously depends on how it gets to 90. So, yeah, right, right, right. The thing is, we don't have to participate in this right now. Put it on our list and I could just do this, right? Maybe it gets up there. I'm, I'm not interested to watch it. So I'm going to set an alert to see if he can get up there within the next month. And if it does, I'm interested. And you know what? Because it might go down, it'd be a, probably a fantastic short if it broke lower. So I alert both sides and move on. You're an equal opportunity trader. I don't care. <laughs> Up, down, and put spreads and call spreads sideways is okay. Right. So here's Disney, wide range bar. And we're in it. We have a put spread. And, and now... As we've explained the chart, you know why we have a put spread. And now it's stalled right at the high, normal. If it goes sideways for a few days, it's going to open up the door to a directional move. Not the greatest one, but it's going to. I'd like to see it go sideways for a few days. But you see how easy it is when you have these scans to find these bars. And then we look at the chart. 
it. Now, here's a wide range bar that's happening after multiple bars up. And that's why we have MasterCard on our long list today. Plain Check out MA. Yep, yeah, that looks, MA looks great. Yep. Right. Now, they're, you know, this one is underperformed, but right. maybe a, a day sideways, which I would like, and then off to the races would be nice. And a nice uptrend. Look at the weekly chart. New highs, just waiting for it. And it's in the wide range bar scan. Here it is. I didn't know where it was. It was a further down. <laughs> so with these scans, we can do some powerful things, meaning I can put in one of these columns here, show me the ones that are close to the 20 period moving average. I was talking to um, Anne in the green room, our chat room yesterday, and she had gotten a scanner. I don't know what it was, but I explained to her, she said, I want something close to the 20 MA or the 20 MA is going up. So which time frame? How close to the 20 MA and all of that? And the thing with most scanners, which I said to everyone in the room, is that they're overpriced and complicated. Some of the things in this scanner, um, while the formulas can be complicated, you can figure things out and they have, and I get, I have no association with this company. It's called TC2000. I mean, they don't pay me anything to show you this. I've just been using it for a decade or two and I forget how long, but um, it's a very powerful scanning tool and they have help on their forum that, hey, I have an idea about how do I do this? And if they will tell you, here's the formula, try it. And then it's up to you to tweak it. But there's so much information there. This is how I've created things. Some of the stuff I know how to do from experience with simple formula writing, but I find different formulas and I combine it with how I want to use it. So that particular formula may not be what I'm looking for, but if I put it together with these candles, meaning I could say, find me wide range bars that are far away from the 20 period moving average and then moving down over the last six bars. I could do that. Right? How do my four strategies relate to your scan? Well, I start with the scan, Carl, and then I look at the chart. And then my strategy is just whatever the chart tells me, I formulate one of those strategies. Is it a buy setup? Is it a sell setup? Is it a base? Is it a flag? Is it a retracement? Is it a, a, re a retest? So when I'm scanning, I'm not looking specifically for a retest pattern. While I could, right now I'm just looking for wide range bars. I'm not interested in this one. I'll go through these a little faster. I'm not interested in this one, although it can keep going higher as a continuation. It's showing relative strength. This one I'm interested in. That's an igniting wide range bar. Yeah, Sanjay, we talked about that this morning. Sanjay in the green room, pro gap. Okay, pro gap, wide range bar. How do I enter this? Wait for it to consolidate. What if it takes off? That's another lesson. I can... yeah, well, but also, if you're an intraday trader, you sure. get on it by using our intraday um, bullish setups within the first 30 minutes, and you're already in it. True. But I, I didn't want to get into intraday, but that's exactly what we would do, and we could get an entry point in it later today or tomorrow. However, without money management, you could wind up with a pretty devastating loss because this could gap down tomorrow. Some news comes out, the CFO just left with all the money and it gaps down to 36 bucks. I mean, you have to have a plan. It includes money management. Here's a nice wide range bar. I mean, whatever's going on with the market right now, just some nice looking stuff that's doing well. So we can always find stocks that are moving with the help of a scanner. There are other scanners out there and I've used some others, but for me, this one is easy to use. It's fast. 
I can look at different combinations of what I'm looking for. And what Dan said, he wasn't joking. In an elevator, on my phone, in a car, <laughs> I will find something <laughs> for a trade. And, uh, and, and I'll use, I'm using this software that operates on my phone as well. So yeah, you guys have gotten the concept of what we're doing for daily, absolutely, Carl. Carl's asking me about gaps. You wanna see gaps? Anyway, one eight, these are 180 ups. Some of these are gonna overlap, but we have to look at the charts, right? To form, to form a bias as to whether we want to use this as one of our strategies. So look, here are topping tail bars. I'm not interested in G as a topping tail bar because it's trendless and, and the weekly is making a bottom. So we have to take the individual candles, put it in the context of trend support and resistance. Now we're getting toward the end of an hour. So I will show you um, the gap list because we can find opportunities there too. Just you know, here are wider bars. So my approach is to make the scan relatively simple, broad, and filter it myself and, and find what it is that fits what I'm looking for within those patterns. And you may have to do a little work to say, this isn't what I'm interested in. I see something like this and I'll, I would say, hey, this looks like a call spread candidate, but I know there isn't gonna be any premium or juice, what we call it, because of the price of the stock and the way it's moving. But, you know, if it was so easy, as Nike says, everybody would do it. So there is some work involved, but this really narrows it down. And sometimes you find what you're looking for in a matter of seconds, and sometimes you gotta spend a half hour. Gaps, I just click on here. I have my gaps and the scans that I've created. Looking and and this was interesting today. And Dan, remember I said everything that and this is highly unusual. These two scans here, <clears throat> this is gapping below a big green bar, and this is gapping above a big red bar. So I'm looking for huge shocks here, and this had this might usually has maybe two or three stocks in there with these big gaps. Today, there were 16 of them. And almost every one that I looked at was going up. So those are bearish gaps. So this one here is, it was higher. That was a green bar. But this one, this looks like it could be, it's got some support here, but this is one I would look at as an intraday short. Um, you can see what we're looking for here. This is gapping below larger green bars. So again, this is for intraday trading, these, these gaps, but they can be swing type of trades as well, um, you know, depending on the pattern. So we can scan for gaps. I do have to program myself, uh, only on ETFs, not coin trade. Uh, I, I didn't follow that. Anyway, you can scan for anything on this ETFs, um, whatever it is. You know FX if you're if you're into that, um, but it, again, this is what we do scanning, and we can also scan from a longer term point of view. So here we're we're looking at those wide range bar scans, topping tail, bottoming tail, and I said show it to me on a weekly chart or a, or a monthly chart. So it's going to be most relevant, of course, at the end of the, the, the week and the month because the bar isn't complete, but it could be a starting point. So if I look at topping tail bars, well, here's Ford. And Are they still in business? So now we can find topping tail bars. And this is what we do. All right, we look for these kind of patterns and then put it in the context of the strategy, meaning, do I want to trade this directionally? Do I want to be long or short? Would I want to use a put or a call? 
or is this something that I think is just an income trade, a credit spread? Right, uh, and we have our we have our new ETF trader, which is more long term oriented, and that's you know trying to easily outperform the S and P five hundred because we're dividing up the pie of the of the spiders, including that's where we could tr trade commodity and currency and country uh, ETFs. And yeah, so we're getting a lot of great feedback on that service, particularly for, you know, the, the people who want to hold for multiple months. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I look at Pepsi is in here. I have to look at this. So we talked about it in the room yesterday yep. on, on the gap and it's doing what you would expect it to do after a wide range bar. Now look at the gap above a red bar clearing this immediate resistance. And now it's consolidating yesterday's gain. And that looks pretty good to go higher. Yeah. yeah and we were talking about that in the green room today. That's what we call a master trader bullish one, two, three pattern following a professional gap. And we love these one, two, three. So we will uh, be using a bullish either stock or option strategy tomorrow if it closes like this. And we were talking about, again, you know, the psychology of why we like that little inside bar. And here's the reason why. It had a big run yesterday, hence the wide range bar. And then today, which the market day is six and a half hours, as you know. And remember earlier, we started with uh, what does an intraday bar look like? So if it keeps this small range in the upper 80% of yesterday's um, range, then for six and a half hours today, it is going sideways on an intraday chart, uh, building a launching pad uh, for tomorrow. So we love these setups, uh, provided there's a price void and, and there is a tradable one in this case. So put this on your watch list tomorrow. Right. By the way, um, if you're interested in joining us in the, in the green room and becoming a subscriber there, these scans, I offer them to our subscribers in the room for free. I've created these and spent the time to do it. I share these with those that have the platform and I send them an email through the platform. They click on it, it open up in their own platform and they work instantly. Um, so if you're interested in joining us in, in the green room and becoming a subscriber and you use this platform, even if you were to use it, not even intraday, uh, at, as an end of day tool for your spreads, your directional trades, I haven't even shown you directional scans, um, but I think the platform, and again, I don't get a penny. I have no, I don't even know the people there, but it's a great platform. I think as an end of day charting, it's like 29 bucks a month. You can't beat it. I don't even know how they do it, but they're from, it's a phenomenal platform and um, you know, for scanning and writing stuff. But if you join us in the green room, you know, you email me uh, through the platform, I tell you how, and uh, it's provide you these layouts. You click a button and it's working instantly. Hey, Greg, there's a question asking if you'll look at uh, this. Um, MFGP. Sure. I, I typed for uh, Frank. It looks like pain. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a lot of gaps there, which is kind of weird. I don't know. I guess PLC, it, it's a uh, foreign stock, but you can see the data here on the monthly and it doesn't look good. If you're short, congratulations. But uh, I don't know what to make out of it because of the, the the little gaps and a gap down today. And while it's recovered a bit, it's kind of, uh, uh, I really wouldn't know what to do with it other than think it's gonna go lower. Do we need to have, no, John, you do not have to have TC2000 to join the room, not at all. I mean, you know, throughout the day, uh, you know, pre-market, uh, I use eSignal for charting and connecting to my trading platform. So I show that in the, in the morning going over futures and different stocks. Then Dan uses um, TradeStation for his charting 
and TOX for his option trades. So um, he displays with his platform. And then as I'm doing the live scanning, I show exactly what I'm showing here now. And we go through the scans and I explain what I'm looking for. We talk about the different uh, you know, technical strategies on how to interpret the chart and you know, adding the little tweaks to the chart as to little failure patterns and you know, creating support and resistance. And there's a lot of education as well as all the trading opportunities that we come up with because we know that if you're in the room, you're looking for the opportunities, but the majority are also looking to learn how to do it themselves. And that's fantastic because I believe everybody should want to learn how to do it themselves. And you run this as a business and nobody runs a business having to pick up the phone and ask somebody, you know, how do I do X, Y, Z? So, but as we work together, um, you know, and one of the, you could say one of the reasons I provide the scans for free is could be kind of self-serving because it's a lot of information to scan through. And if I have those in the room looking for what I'm looking for, well, maybe they find things before I do, or maybe I'm not even looking at it. So we work together to find opportunities to make money. What's better than that? <laughs> Absolutely. Right. So with that being said, Dan, I'm hungry. All right. Let's um... I'll finish it up here. And I think, was it a great session, guys? Hope you learned a bunch. And uh, look, whatever your scanner is, my advice is to keep the scan relatively simple. Look for these candle patterns, as I explained, and start with that. And then put it in the context of your trend support resistance and multiple time frames, and the odds are in your favor. And then trading it however you like. Buy the underlying, short it, you know, put spreads and whatever. Before I'm gonna go just to see where the markets are at here. You know, overall daily chart, not a big deal. Looks kind of, you know, bearish, of course, but um, you know. Hanging here at the lows, which the intraday charts say it'll go lower, but we'll see. That was a powerful move off of the low here and that bottom that, that created. So we'll see what happens over the coming days. So join us in the room and uh, let's work together. All right, everybody. Have a great Hey, Pat. How you been? All right. Awesome. So, all right, everybody. Have a great trading day. All right. Happy trading all.